Well, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Dante Wright and Kim Potter? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background in this case, I'll move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. The incident in this case is a shooting that took place in Minnesota in 2021. A police officer named Kim Potter shot a motorist named Dante Wright. Dante Wright was 20 years old. He had been working in various fast food and retail positions after dropping out of high school two years earlier. It's been reported that he had a learning disability. Wright had a number of negative encounters with the criminal justice system. He had been charged with aggravated armed robbery a 2019 incident in which he allegedly tried to rob a female acquaintance by choking her and using a handgun. Wright was arrested in June of 2020 for allegedly having a pistol without a permit at a public place and fleeing from officers. He failed to appear in court for proceedings related to those charges. A warrant was issued for his arrest. Kim Potter was a 48-year-old police officer with the Brooklyn Center Police Department. She had been a police officer for many years. At the time of the shooting, she was a field training officer. She was supervising a trainee named Anthony Lucky at the time of the incident. Potter was right-handed. She was armed with a 9mm Glock 17 semi-automatic pistol holstered on her right side. On her left side, she carried a taser. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On April 11, 2021, Kim Potter and Anthony Lucky were on a patrol in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. They noticed a 2011 Buick LaCrosse, which had an expired tag and an air freshener hanging from the rearview mirror. The driver of the vehicle was Dante Wright. There was a woman in the passenger seat. Potter and Lucky initiated a traffic stop at 1.53 p.m. Dante Wright pulled over and Lucky started interacting with him. Wright did not have a driver's license or proof of insurance. Lucky ran Wright's name through the police database and discovered that there was an arrest warrant out for him. He also noticed there was a protective order filed against Wright. Potter and Lucky wanted to make sure that the woman in the passenger seat was not the same woman protected in that protective order. By this time, Sergeant Michael Johnson arrived at the scene. He was Kim Potter's supervisor. The officers approached the vehicle with the intent of arresting Wright. Potter and Lucky were on the driver's side, and Johnson was on the passenger side. Lucky told Wright that he was under arrest. Wright stepped out of the vehicle and put his hands behind his back. As Lucky was trying to get the handcuffs sorted out, which seemed to take longer than necessary, Potter walked up and grabbed a piece of paper from Lucky in her right hand before transferring it to her left hand. At this point, Wright started to resist arrest. He broke free from Lucky and climbed back into his vehicle. Johnson reached in from the passenger side and tried to gain control of the gear selector. He was trying to prevent Wright from driving away. Potter yelled, I'll tase you, then yelled, taser, 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 as she produced the Glock 17 from her holster. This, of course, is her firearm, not her taser. She pointed the pistol at Wright for five and a half seconds before discharging a single round, which struck him in the chest. Potter said, oh blank, I just shot him. Wright drove the Buick about 470 feet before slamming into another vehicle. He was pronounced dead at 2.18 p.m. Potter shouted that she grabbed the wrong gun and said, I am going to go to prison, when simply saying, I am going to prison, would have sufficed. Three days later, on April 14, Potter was charged with second-degree manslaughter. She would be additionally charged with first-degree manslaughter in September. Kim Potter went on trial in December of 2021. She was convicted of both first- and second-degree manslaughter on December 23, 2021. She was taken into custody, and at the time making this video, is awaiting her sentence. She is facing a maximum of 15 years in prison, Considering that she does not have a criminal record, a typical sentence for this charge would be about seven years. Now moving to my analysis. 
The wording of the manslaughter charges in the state of Minnesota is nebulous and confusing. To be convicted of first-degree manslaughter, Potter must be guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of causing Wright's death while committing a misdemeanor, specifically reckless handling or use of a firearm. So the key word here is reckless. In order for the act to be reckless, Potter must have committed a conscious or intentional act in connection with the handling or use of the firearm. To be found guilty of second-degree manslaughter, Potter must have caused Wright's death through culpable negligence, which means she created an unreasonable risk and consciously took a chance of causing death or great bodily harm while using or possessing a firearm. So even though culpable negligence is easier to prove than recklessness, both charges contain the word conscious. Much of this case was hinged on how that word would be interpreted. In order for Potter to be guilty, she must have engaged in a voluntary act. If it was reflexive, that is not enough for a conviction. Both the prosecution and the defense agreed that Kim Potter intended to use her taser. So even though she acted voluntarily, she didn't believe she was holding a firearm. No one is saying that her use of the pistol was intentional. Now, if one can somehow get past the wording of the charges, I think this case really comes down to two questions. First question, was Kim Potter justified in using deadly force regardless of what she intended to do? If she was justified in using deadly force, it would not matter if she produced a firearm or a taser. Moving to the second question, if she was not justified in using deadly force, was the production and firing of the pistol reckless, or was this simply an accident? On occasion, people make mistakes. Some of them are fatal. They believe they're doing one thing when they're actually doing another. Not every incident is criminal. This is a mistake that other officers have made. There have been 15 other known cases in the United States where a police officer fires a pistol when their stated intention was to use their taser. Now moving to the next question. Was Kim Potter actually guilty of manslaughter? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea of guilt, starting with the inculpatory evidence. There's no question that Kim Potter shot and killed Dante Wright. Wright was unarmed. Potter had been trained to distinguish a Glock 17 from a Taser. There are quite a few differences between these two weapons. For example, the Glock weighs 2.11 pounds when fully loaded. The Taser, 0.94 pounds. The Glock is black. The Taser is yellow and black. The Glock was in a holster on her right side. The Taser was in a holster on her left. The Glock has a safety feature on the trigger that can be felt with the index finger when the trigger is mounted. The taser does not have this feature. Moving to the exculpatory evidence, there is little question that Kim Potter's actions were unintentional. Potter only fired the Glock one time, as if she thought she was firing the taser. If she intended to fire her pistol, she would have fired more than once, as per her training. Her reaction after the shooting is also consistent with someone who recognized they had just made a mistake. Dante Wright was breaking the law when he was shot. He was resisting arrest. Wright was attempting to put his vehicle in gear. Michael Johnson had reached into the car. If Wright had driven away, Johnson could have been injured or killed. One may consider the car to be a deadly weapon under those circumstances. Potter had never fired her Glock or her Taser in the line of duty. This is a good thing in terms of public safety, but it also means she was not aware of how she would react to a situation if she had to use her firearm or taser. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Kim Potter was guilty? Here's how I look at this case. I think that Potter was reckless by producing and firing a gun in the situation. However, I think there is reasonable doubt that she was guilty of manslaughter. There are two areas of reasonable doubt from my point of view. One, Dante Wright was resisting arrest and may have endangered Sergeant Johnson. Two, the use of the word conscious in the definition for manslaughter is not consistent with her behavior. This word implies that she was aware and knowledgeable about her situation. Yet the prosecution admitted that her actions were not intentional. Technically, I suppose a behavior can be both conscious and unintentional, like somebody could be impaired 
So they're aware of what's going on to some degree, but they're not acting with intent. But for the most part, this is splitting hairs. If somebody is acting consciously, they are acting intentionally. I think whoever wrote this law committed manslaughter against the construct of clear writing. If this shooting occurred in another state, where the law was written in a logical way, and Dante Wright did not resist arrest, then I would say that Potter was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of first-degree manslaughter. Without the two reasonable doubts that I mentioned, Kim Potter's entire defensive strategy was essentially the whoops defense. I pulled and fired my gun by accident. Whoops. Sorry about that. This defense is insufficient. I think that the bottom line of this case is that there are some mistakes a police officer simply cannot make. This wasn't like pushing the wrong pedal in a car or pulling out cash when one intended to pay with a credit card. This was a situation of life and death. She was responsible to deploy the correct weapon. Not doing so is reckless. This is a crime without intent. I think it's reasonable to believe that she was so focused on the threat, so wrapped up in the fear, that it never occurred to her that she had retrieved her pistol instead of her taser. I think she was not cut out to be a police officer, and this was only discovered at the worst possible time. She was simply not calm and controlled under pressure. Moving to the last question, did Kim Potter help herself by testifying in her own defense? There have been a number of negative reactions to her tearful testimony. In particular, how she became suddenly dramatic at some points, but she was calm and calculated at others. I think Kim Potter made a few mistakes during her testimony. She minimized the severity of what Dante Wright was doing to get pulled over in the first place, saying that if she was alone, she wouldn't have bothered to pull him over at all. And she minimized his outstanding warrant, referring to his crimes as petty. Even still, I do think that Potter helped herself by testifying, although clearly it wasn't enough to sway the jury. Her dramatic crying and carrying on when talking about the shooting could have been convincing. It was a little over the top and forced, but it may have been genuine. I think the struggle for the prosecution, as far as Kim Potter's testimony, was that this case was not about inconsistencies. Therefore, the value of a clever cross-examination was greatly reduced. No one disagrees as to the facts of this case, so they were not going to catch her in some type of massive deception. This is all about trying to read the mind of Kim Potter, which no one can do. Now moving to the lessons learned. Lesson number one is to avoid resisting arrest. The fact that police officers carry guns can be frightening sometimes. Unlike citizens with guns, police officers are given authority and encouraged to use guns in a broad variety of circumstances. As a group, sometimes police officers can be paranoid. They take on an us-against-them mentality. One tip for surviving encounters with law enforcement is not to commit a felony or a misdemeanor in front of them. It's actually a good idea to never commit a felony or a misdemeanor under any circumstances, but it is particularly dangerous to do right in front of a police officer. Lesson number two, not everybody is cut out to be a police officer. I think very few people actually have a personality for that profession. Kim Potter simply didn't have enough restraint or good judgment. At some point, her supervisors should have recognized this. Some people simply can't handle the responsibility of possessing a firearm. Even after shooting right, Potter couldn't control her emotions and essentially admitted that she was headed to prison. Emotions rarely give people the right answer to any problem. Although, I suppose technically, that particular emotional outburst did accurately predict the outcome. Those are my thoughts on the case of Dante Wright and Kim Potter. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.